Hello guys and welcome to my review of the Powerbeats Pro Truly Wireless. Starting off with the price, these can be picked up for about $250. Currently you're not going to really see any deals because these literally just came out. Uh, moving on to build quality, the case themselves feels very robust, has a cold touch to the feel so I would believe this is a metal case. The hinge mechanism when opening and closing is also very nice, doesn't feel like it will snap off. Earbuds themselves are made of a dense, hard plastic. So these feel very robust as well. And these are water resistant. So these are great for active lifestyles where you're going to come into sweat, uh, water, or if you're just walking around in the city during a cold climate and it snows, these should be pretty fine. It wouldn't be damaged by that precipitation. Now, the actual overall build of this earpiece is excellent so can't really go wrong with this build quality moving over to the comfort you do get a wide assortment of ear tips also the nozzle is pretty standard so you can go online and find a lot of aftermarket tips that you can just buy and throw on these to get the best fit for your ears now comfort for me is pretty decent i would say it's decent because I'm struggling here with this ear tip. Let's see if I can get this on. There we go. So it's decent because I feel like these ear hooks, they will create a pressure point on the backside of my ear after about maybe an hour and a half to two hours of listening. Usually if I reseat them in my ears, kind of alleviates that pressure. But generally speaking, I would just remove them and give my ears a bit of a, a relief for five to 10 minutes, put them back on, and then my ears should be fine for another two hours or so. So comfort wise for me, it's quite decent the air hooks are the main problem in terms of the comfort not being any better than that but the air hooks are very useful because it is what gives this product its stability when you're active so when i'm at the gym doing uh burpees or hit training stuff like that i'm doing like inclines and uh crunches and stuff these are not going to move at all they are literally stuck on your ears until you forcibly take your hand and remove them from your ears so this is very 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 good these are great for active lifestyles as a result and even just day-to-day -day use because i know a lot of people run into issues with earphones and you're just walking around or if you're say if you're eating and the movement of your jaw uh, causes the seal in your ear to change so what's going to happen is the earphones are going to slowly just start slipping out of your ears and eventually fall right out of your ears with these you don't have to ever worry about that at all moving over to the features features set on these are probably the reason why i would say these are my favorite overall truly wireless at the moment and it's partly due to the apple's h1 chip which one creates a very seamless pair so it's not just the fact that these compare to your iphone or your ipad which is one button it's the fact that once you hit connect, it'll pair to all of your Apple devices throughout your Apple ecosystem through your iCloud account. So anytime you need to use these on say, even your Apple TV or your MacBook, which wasn't even part of the pairing process, this will pop up as a connectable device automatically. And it doesn't matter if this device is currently in use with another product, you simply just tap on it and hit connect. This will automatically disconnect from that product that you're using, say if it's an iPhone, and then it'll automatically connect to the new product that sent out that connection request. Seamless, works all the time. This all happens under two seconds. Absolutely love it. Another feature that I like is the fact that these are independent. So you can use either the left or the right earpiece independent from one another to connect to your source. This is great for, when, for example, when I'm at the office, I don't need two earpieces because I'm probably not listening to music. I just need to have one in so I can probably listen to a video or use it for a phone call. So I'll have the other earpiece and charge it. So this gives you awareness if you need so and effectively can theoretically double the battery life. So the battery life on these is advertised for about nine hours if you use a single earpiece at a time, you can roughly get 18 hours of usage via mono connectivity. Absolutely amazing. Another thing I like about these is you take them out of your ears, they can detect whether or not they're not in your ears via these optical sensors. Say so this black little 
glossy strip here. It's an optical sensor in there. It can detect what, when it's in your ear. It'll automatically power on the earpiece and they're ready to go. You take them out, the audio pauses. If you put them down, there's accelerometers in the earpiece that will detect that the earpieces are no longer moving. So that means they're not on your head. And then eventually it'll power down the earpiece and save battery life. These are all things that you don't know that they're happening, but it does add to the convenience of using this uh, this earphone. It's very, very convenient. I do also like the fact that the controls are essentially symmetrical. So you get the same controls. This B logo is a button. You play and pause by pressing it once. If you double press, it'll skip forward to the next track. If you triple press, it'll go back to the previous track. And you also have volume blockers on the top here. So press this on the right side, it'll go up in volume. You press that on the left side, it'll go down in volume. And it's the same controls on either earpiece, which also extends into making a mono connectivity a lot more easier to do. A lot of earpieces, they have different controls on different earpieces. So if you only use one earpiece, you don't get the full control set because the other earpiece is not in use. Bluetooth codex on these is pretty decent. You get SBC, of course, and you get AAC. Now, AAC is actually excellent if you're using it on an Apple device. The encoder that Apple uses is actually quite good and sounds relatively close to Aptex. Actually, it sounds as good as Aptex and relatively close to Aptex HD in terms of the measurements and the, the, the signal to noise ratio and stuff of that nature. Sound quality on these is excellent. The Bluetooth transmission via AAC is excellent. There's no latency. But AAC over Android, the encoder on Android is not as good as the encoder on the Apple devices. So these won't sound as good theoretically via an Android device as they can sound on an Apple device. Battery life on these stated nine hours. I get roughly that advertised time and that's insane for a truly wireless pair, nine hours per charge absolutely insane and the fact that i use these a lot with um with just one earpiece grants me far more than nine hours i get about 18 hours theoretically because i'm using one earpiece at a time now the recharge on these is insanely fast as well these charge up in probably an hour so you throw these inside the case within about an hour they're good to go uh they also have a quick charge i believe it's 10 minutes for an hour and a half or so quote me if i'm wrong uh you can mention that in the comments but the quick charge is also pretty decent all in all the battery on these is excellent i've never ran into an issue where the battery has ran out of me that has happened to me a few times with my sennheiser momentums but these i have yet and i've had these for quite a while since they were uh released and i've never ran out of battery while using these the charging is via lightning which is kind of a bummer but if you have an iphone you just use the same cable that your uh your iphone uses to charge i do wish this was USB-C, and i do wish the iphone was USB-C. i just want all the things USB-C. but hey if you have an iphone just use the same cable that you charge your iphone with and that'll charge the power beats pro call quality on these is excellent it uses kind of the same kind of accelerometer to detect if you're talking that the AirPods use so People over the phone say that I'm, I sound crystal clear. It doesn't matter if I'm in a noisy environment, moderate environment, or a quiet environment. These perform very well. So I would rate these as pretty good for call quality. I would confidently use these in a conference call. Um, not necessarily in a loud environment, but if you're in a moderate, maybe in a coffee shop, or if you're at a mall or something like that, these would be pretty good to uh, pick up a conference call on. Now, lastly is the sound quality. And this is where I would say it's the biggest issue, but not so much. These sound pretty good, but the problem that I have with the sound quality extends to the overall sound experience. Now, what I mean is the whole sum of the sound, the noise isolation, the sound signature and the sound quality. Noise isolation plays a very big part in sound quality because if there is poor noise isolation and you're in a noisy environment, it doesn't really matter how well engineered that speaker is. The music is going to sound like crap because a lot of the ambient noise that's in your environment is going to seep into the music 
And there goes all of those fine nuances and details because now you're gonna hear the car horn, the ambulance siren, the baby crying, the dog barking, stuff like that. It's gonna just seep into the music and that's gonna be part of your soundtrack. The issue I have with these is the noise isolation is quite poor. It's a little bit better than the ear pods, but if you're using these for commuting purposes, or just walking through the city, you're gonna hear a lot of what's going on. And as a result, you're gonna to wanna to crank the volume. And as you crank the volume, the issue that I have with the sound signature in the Power Beats Pro becomes evident. And that's the fact that it has quite a elevated treble over the rest of the frequencies. So overall, the frequency response on these is quite flat, surprisingly, from a Beats product. The bass over to the mid-range is quite evenly balanced and measurements does showcase that. This is not a bassy pair of Beats headphones that you will probably be led to believe. These are quite balanced in the bass. It has a nice thump. It extends very, very well, very linear, doesn't bleed into the mid-range. It's very tight. It's very controlled. It's clear. The mid-range has a very clean, neutral sound signature. It's not elevated, so it comes to very clear. Sometimes it can sound a little bit cold or harsh, and that's because the treble elevates itself over the rest of the frequencies. So as you move over to the treble, it has an elevation. Uh, it has a slight peak around eight to 10 kilohertz, but the lower treble also has an emphasis. So it kind of creates this over presence and over uh, shrill uh, kind of like attitude to the sound signature. At medium to lower volumes, this actually sounds pretty good to my ears. The excess treble does help preserve the clarity at lower volumes, but due to the low noise isolation when you're outside, you're gonna instinctively wanna crank the volume to mitigate all of those noises. And as a result, you're gonna get a lot of that treble push, which does interfere with the overall sound signature and kind of makes the sound a bit cold and shrill at very higher volumes. Now, this can be beneficial if you're using these in the gym. The active, the sorry, the extra treble push can create this kind of energetic and lively character to the sound. Um, but overall, for me, I don't really like the tonal balance because of that treble. And these are not my favorite sound and truly wireless, of course, because of that. But technically, I do try to just listen to it at medium volumes to lower volumes. But as a result, a lot of the outside noise if I'm not in a quiet environment, does seep into the music. And overall, the sound experience is kind of uh, reduced as a result. But summing everything up, these are still my favorite overall truly wireless earphones because of essentially how well versed it is in every other feature other than the sound experience. So if you throw in an EQ, you could probably mitigate the treble emphasis but you're not gonna really be able to mitigate the noise isolation. So that's where it kind of hurts, but I still will highly recommend these, but with that caveat. So if I have not discussed something in this review that you wanted to have answered, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching guys, later.